they contain and some hints um, that would help us to stay away from them or to stay firm during such turbulence. O believers, indeed Allah had bestowed upon his servants numerous blessings that are apparent and hidden. He chose one among these blessings to be the most sacred. He gives it to whom he wishes among his servants and deprives many others from it. This blessing is that of Islam. It is a blessing that is indeed susceptible to vanish. Yaqub used to task his children to guard this blessing. He used to say, indeed, Allah has chosen for you this faith, so do not die except in a state of full submission. It is also part of the supplications of those well grounded in knowledge. They say, our Lord, do not let our hearts deviate after you have guided us. Grant us your mercy. You are indeed the giver of all bounties. Every Muslim is commanded to supplicate Allah for her guidance and steadfastness upon the right path. Allah says in a hadith Qudsi, as narrated by our noble prophet, O oh my servants, all of you are astray except those whom I have guided. So seek guidance from me and I shall guide you. Servants of Allah, one of the greatest trials in the one is the one that shakes the hearts of servants and the one that derails someone from their religion. The Messenger والسلام, said, be prompt in doing good deeds before you are overtaken by turbulence, which would be like a part of the dark night. A man would be a believer in the morning and turn to be and turn to disbelief in the evening. Or he would be a believer in the evening and turn disbeliever in the morning and would sell his faith or his religion for worldly goods. The above hadith means that we should put in an effort and hasten towards committing good deeds before the coming of trials that derail and discourage us from good deeds. The severity of these trials is that they resemble the darkness of the darkest nights. In such darkness, one can't see the light of righteousness. Rather, issues become confusing for a lot of people such that a man would be a believer in the morning and turn to disbelief in the evening or vice versa. Servants of Allah, your messenger والسلام, used to seek refuge with Allah from tribulations. He used to say, O oh Allah, I seek refuge in you from the punishment of the grave and from the punishment of hellfire and from the trials of life and death and from the evil of the trial of the false messiah. O oh, believers, we should know that trials are of two types. Trials associated with doubtful and confusing issues, and that's the most dangerous. The other type is the one associated with lusts and desires. Trials associated with doubtful issues are brought about by ignorance about the knowledge of Islam. Someone's vision gets blurred from getting between good and bad as a result. The example of that is what happens with the people who innovate in the religion. The people that innovate issues in their creed, utterances, and their acts of worship that are not part of the ordainment, ordainment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They thereby go astray while they falsely think that they are doing something virtuous or right. The trial associated with lusts and desires is the one that makes someone give preference to his or her personal lusts and desires over the command of Allah the Exalted. So he or she commits haram, obeying their lusts, while they clearly know that Allah has made that act prohibited or that they abscond a mandatory act of worship deliberately. This type of trial has many examples. Some of them include the lusts associated with private parts, some associated with stomach, some associated with position of leadership, all of these, you know, make people go astray. Desires have two pathways. 
one is permitted by Allah and the other one is prohibited. A believer would always be satisfied with halal and abstain from haram. He is often fearful of some of the permissible things not to lead him or her to haram. On the other hand, the person who falls in the trap of tribulations would always be confused about haram and halal and does not bother to follow the command of Allah. O Muslims, whoever reflects on the verses of the Quran and the prophetic tradition of the Messenger والسلام, he or she would find a lot of hints on how to stay firm during such tribulations. The first of them is embracing the Quran, to memorize it, recite it, reflect on it, and act by it. Allah says, the disbelievers say, if only the Quran has been sent down to him all at once, we have sent it as such in stages, so we may reassure your heart with it, and we have revealed it at a deliberate pace. Another recipe for staying firm during trials and tribulations is Iman, or belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and committing pious deeds. Allah says, Allah makes the believers steadfast with the firm word of faith in this worldly life and the hereafter. Another clue is reflecting on the stories of prophets of Allah to study them efficiently for the purpose of followership and action. One of the greatest among them uh, is pious companionship and friendship that helps a Muslim to be upon the right path. Allah says to his messenger, and patiently stick with those who call upon their Lord morning and evening, seeking his pleasure. Do not let your eyes look beyond them, desiring the luxuries of this worldly life. Another one is running away from tribulations and not facing them whenever they happen. It is mentioned in the story of that man that killed 99 or 100 people when he asked a knowledgeable person, he told him, yes, what stands between you and the repentance? You better go to such and such land. There are people devoted to prayer and worship and you also worship along with them and do not come to the land of yours since it was an evil land for you. Another powerful recipe is supplication. The most frequent invocation of the Messenger والسلام, was, O controller of the heart, make my heart steadfast on your religion. Another one is turning to the people of, of knowledge, those who are vast in it, those that are known to be steadfast upon the followership of the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You should ask them about things you find confusing, especially information of, of public interest. Allah says, and when there comes to them something of information about public security or fear, they spread it around. But if they had referred it back to the messenger or to those of authority among them, then the ones who can draw correct conclusions from it would have known about it. And if not for the favor of Allah upon you and his mercy, you would have followed shaitan except for a few. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make our hearts firm upon his religion and to, protect, and to protect us from tribulations that are apparent as well as those that are hidden. Wa subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika. Ashadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa tuhu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.